disappear, they come and they disappear, they come and they disappear, and you're like, well, where are they going? Or are they really here? Were they ever there? Yes, yes, and yes. Those little things are what we're calling particles. They're where the electric vortexes of, of, of the electric universe model intensify in a pattern, which is phi, and that they pop up and disappear and pop up and disappear and pop up and disappear. And we're calling those separate material objects, and they are not. They are all, the universe is made of waves. It, it sound is wave, light is wave, and I would say even material, what we consider to be material is wave. Why would it be any different? Why would sound be a wave, light be a wave, and then all of a sudden the rules change and matter not be a wave? Of course it's a wave. You look at the center of any object, it's, there's nothing there, right? You look at the center of an, of an atom or a planet, there's not a magnetic ball of iron in there. There's not a hot coal of iron in there. There's empty space. It's like the center of a, of a tornado. It's all built on vortex cones. At the center is what we would call a gravity shaft. That's exactly it, actually. You're, you're absolutely right, man, and I gotta, I gotta say, it's incredibly hard to talk about this because there's very little accurate language in existence, and there are certain people who are able to, Walter Russell. Yeah, yeah, so that's a great point, and I struggle with that because I, I, I like to talk about this kind of stuff, and I, I get caught up in atomic language, right? But it's, it's, it is a model, don't get me wrong. Atomic physics is a model, but what it maps really well is the entropy side of, rea of material existence. But on the other, there is a, legitimately, there is an energy source that is not entropy, it's um, the opposite of that, it's centropy. And they're both going at the same time. It's, it's, it's like looking at a galaxy, right, and only seeing the spiraling light and not realizing that that there's all this darkness that is a part of the galaxy. We're not able to see it from our vantage, but it's happening. So we need to talk about both sides, the entropy side and the uh, centropy, I think that's the right word, the centropy side. So, and then you have a hole. And atomic physics would be really good for talking about the way things uh, dissolve, the way things get destroyed, or the way energy um, gets dispersed. But it does not even address what energy is, where it comes from, and how it gets created, which probably doesn't get, you know, can't be created nor destroyed, probably just is. But they don't even attempt to, to go there. They don't, they, don't, they can't. They, they're not thinking outside of the box. I was going to say, speaking of boxes, what if like biology is the box we're supposed to transcend biology? We can't transcend biology, and this is just my view, and the reason why is because if we're going to exist in, in, the, in the material, right? If we're in spirit, absolutely we transcend. What about transhumanism and transferring consciousness into technology? Probably the most unhealthy psychological meme that we've ever had on planet Earth. Because it takes you away from what you really, you, who you really are. Like your divine created um, identity bound in nature, right? And that's why I look at it as a, a, a meme to, to enslave our psychology is because that's why, and I'm not, please, I'm not trying to offend anybody, but, you know, to put someone up like Bruce Jenner as like the icon of, of the millennials is, and to have it be accepted just shows that the millennials are just not thinking. They're not discerning. It's like, it's, it's basically a way to create more and more and more and more and more liberal mindedness and liberal mindedness um, and I'm not, I'm not saying liberty, okay? I'm all for freedom, free thinking, and free thought, and liberty. But liberal mindedness in the political sphere, or the sociological sphere, if you look at it, it all it is is Marxism. Well, Bruce Jenner is horrible, and I don't even know what her name at this point, just because I don't like her. She's just continuing the misogynistic idea of what women are and should look like. Yeah. She's a sexist. Yes. 
Yeah, and the, the way I look at all these things, on all of them, and it's, I'm not just pick, picking one like gender, is the whole goal of, and I, it's hard to say, you know, like they, right? The whole goal of the people pulling the social engineering purse strings, the people that fund wars, and the people that um, are trying to control the 8 billion people on the planet, they don't care what meme they give you as long as it polarizes you. That's all they care about. So if you pick one side or the other, red or blue, Republican or Democrat, gay or, gay or straight, male or female, they got you. They love that because you're not actually thinking from who you really are, a spirit, a spiritual being, a centered spiritual being, an, an individual with a, de a destiny that you have a co-creative element to. And they want, they just constantly want to fragment your psychology. So I'm, I'm into unity consciousness, like a psychology of wholeness. And you can be, you can be male or female or gay or, gay or straight. You, you can be whatever you want and still, or even, it, neither. Well, you can't be neither. So that's where I draw the line. That's too liberal minded. Nature says plants and animals and chemicals and every other kingdom, the vegetable kingdom, they're gendered, they're sexed. Okay, it doesn't do this to say, if you don't like being a male, you should go be a female because your psychology is wrong in this current time. They're saying this is the matter and spirit, right? It's like there is a duality that exists in the universe that every spiritual, psychological, mystical uh, um, doctrine has um, struggled with and acknowledged. They're like, why is everything dual? Why do I have love and and hate? Why do I have pleasure and pain? Why do I have up and down, hot and cold, right? And essentially, you don't. What's, what's up if you're on the planet, right? You know, if, like people are on the other side of the planet right now with their heads going that way. To them, that's up, right? To me, this is up. So essentially, it's all whole. It's all one, right? But we are, we are bound here to play this earthbound thing for some reason, and I think it's for refinement of consciousness. And the only way you can do that is by being a sovereign being and claiming your own true divine personal power. And you can, you can play whatever role you want in that. You could be a man or a woman or whatever you want to do, but you, ha you have to come from that center or you're off center, and that's their game. They want to polarize you, no matter what it is. Here's how it's not pol here, here's how it's not, here, that's a good question. Here's how it's not polarizing. Someone that is truly centered will be able to recognize the interconnectivity in all things. So instead of opposing someone violently because of their ideology, right? They go, if I'm honest with myself and I come from my center, I have to know that this being is an extension of me. In in some way, shape, or form. And I have to be able to connect with that, right? That takes an, an openness, right? And I look at love, spelled backwards, as E-V-O-L. It's the root word for evolution. So love is the interconnective principle in nature. It's a real thing. It's, it's, I'm not talking about romantic love. I'm talking about like, and love can be hard, right? Like, is it, is it better to punish your child when they've done something wrong? Is that more loving than to enable they're really bad conduct. So love is not just sappy romantic stuff, it's interconnectivity. It's like, what's the best way to be aware of my connection to the infinite? Personal power, you know? And you, you can't be neither, can you be both then? I look, by the way, people are both, sometimes we're born one way. Yes. Yes. I know that bi there is biology that, that does this too, like certain fish yeah. will, will change. And there's other there's plants that yeah, do it too. Yeah. But here's what, I, here's what I think. I look at it like, at least in fish, in those fish and a couple other seahorses, I think. The reason why they'll, they'll switch their, um, I don't even know if the right word is gender or sexuality, their gender. They change their sex. They change their sex. Uh, the reason why they do that has to do with survival of the species, okay? So this is, this is why biology is saying, 
we are all gendered because the whole point in being male or female is to procreate. It's to continue the species, right? And we have 8 billion people on the planet now, and maybe there's a, a spiritual and a psychological reason for this issue to be in the forefront of our conscious dialogue. I agree with all that. But not at the, not at the cost of self-denial. See, self-denial is nihilism and is also atheism. And if you deny your existential being, like the fact that you exist, and if you don't even deal with that, you know, if you're like, that's too hard to think about and I'm gonna, I'm gonna go and just live life in all these fun, fashionable ways and not think about the reality of the fact that I'm here and the mystery of that, I look at that as you're, you're practicing some form of self-denial. And you're not being responsible. Like, not, that's the convenience of nihilism, right? What I say doesn't matter, um, so what I do doesn't matter, so why should I care about anything? And what you're really saying is, I don't fucking care, pardon me, I don't care about myself. And that is self-denial. It's like, you can't sit here and acknowledge the fact that you exist and that you don't know how this all came to be and then go, but I don't wanna play. It's like, no, this is a gift and it's hard, don't, don't get me wrong, it's, it's an extremely challenging gift. It's, being on earth and doing this is like, this is the ultimate training ground for consciousness, right?